Hey, what's going on guys here? Welcome back to another episode of Bad Beats Barbecue. Hey, today we're going to be doing a couple of things uh, different. I want to test out a few things and I want to show you how to do uh, something with the old slow and sear, okay? Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be smoking some turkey legs. Yep, the old fashioned turkey legs. We got three of them sitting here. And the first thing that we're going to be trying out is that I, uh, these are already pre-prepped. Uh, I didn't want to do that on camera because I had to change gloves three times and all that type of stuff because we used three different binders, okay? And I want to see which binder tastes better or works better or reacts better on the skin or what have you. So the first binder we use, one of these is done in mustard. Another binder is parquet butter. And the third binder is oil. So each one of these legs has one of these binders on it. And then we season these with uh, Bronzeville rib rub from the spice house out in chicago okay so this is some great rub uh got some real great flavor to it you can use any rub you want to okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to be using the slow and sear on the uds so i'm going to show you how to set the slow and sear up on the uds uh using the dripping griddle and all that type of stuff uh so you guys who just have a uds don't think that you can't buy the slow and sear to use uh for two zone cooking because as great as the uds is for long cooks uh, sometimes you don't want to use a basket full of charcoal if you're only cooking for a few hours. So um, the slow and sear is a great option to use in the UDS. So hey, let's go on out to the patio. I'll show you how to set this bad boy up and we will get this cook underway. All right guys, so here's our trusty UDS. This was designed and built, uh, fashioned behind the one that uh, Phil over at Daddy Cooks built. So check him out if you want to know how to build one. So as you can see, we have our first rack already on the second layer of the UDS. And here we're putting in our dripping griddle. Now you don't have to have a dripping griddle, you can just place a piece of foil in the same area. I'm just trying to reduce the amount of volume in the drum to keep the heat at the top. And here we're putting in the uh, slow and sear. It's already loaded with charcoal. We're not gonna be using any water in this because I want a dry environment to kind of mitigate some crispy skin on the turkey legs. And here we're just doing a few minor adjustments to get it the way I want. Now when we start our slow and sear, we like to use these tumbleweed fire starters in one corner. They work very well. And here we're using some apple wood chunks to add a little smoke. Okay, we're using one of these Vortex style grills, grates here. Uh, it's not necessary. I just had this one ready to go. Uh, just make sure you have a grill grate that has one in that flips up in case you have to add more charcoal or wood. And here we just do standard two zone cooking. I'm going to place the turkey legs opposite the fire. And we're going to try to cook between uh, 225 uh, and 275 for some low and slow. Okay, after two hours of cooking, uh, you can see there's some great color on these turkey legs. Now we're going to check our internal temperatures. We're shooting for 165 uh, to 170 degrees. Now we had already flipped these over once because as you remember, the top of the turkey leg was toward the fire. So we flipped these after an hour to put them away from the fire. So now I'm just gonna move them back toward the fire so that the uh, side that didn't get crispy can uh, get a little texture to it and add a little bit of uh, contrast uh, in the skin. Just try to crisp it up a little bit. We're gonna keep these on here probably for another additional 15 minutes, but they're ready to come off now. And after 15 minutes, here is our final product. 
as you can see the turkey legs got some great color on them it's got some great texture on the skin and the smoke the smoky uh, smell uh, is fantastic so let's bring these bad boys in and have a little taste test okay guys so we've taken our uh, turkey legs off of the UDS and let me give you a close-up look at these all right so as you can see we got some good pullback on the meat and the bone um, they look nice and crispy but one is you can tell one is a little bit more crispier than the other so the room smells smoky got a nice color to them and um, so let's go ahead and have a taste test now we cooked these uh, turkey legs up until 170 degrees. Um, research on the internet says you should cook turkey legs at least to 160, 165. I like to take stuff a little about 5 degrees higher just to be on the safe side. Then plus we brought them in and we covered them and let them carry over for about 20 minutes or so. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and have a taste test. First, let's go ahead and uh, check out the one that was the olive oil. Okay. Now the skin is um, is not very crispy with the olive oil. It's kind of pliable. Okay, let's go ahead and taste the meat. This is a great tasting turkey leg. If I didn't mention before, we brine these turkey legs in a combination of water, brown sugar, kosher salt, and raspberry flavored tea. So the sweetness with the saltiness and then the saltiness and the spiciness of this Bronzeville rib rub from uh, the Spice House makes a fantastic turkey leg, okay? So that was the olive oil one. I didn't see anything significant about that one. Let's try the one that was, oh, I'm sorry, that we used butter as a, as a binder. Now, the one that I used butter as a, as a binder it has a slightly different flavor than the one with the olive oil. I can taste a slight buttery flavor in the background when I do that. So obviously the butter was basting on the turkey leg while it cooked. And um, so it has the same flavor as the one in the olive oil. It tastes great, uh, great flavor, but it has that hint of butter, buttery flavor to it. Okay. You might want to say, man, he's biting off all three of these turkey legs. Well, all three turkey legs for me. So, all right. So, and the last one is the mustard. Now, we know that when we use mustard as a binder on ribs, the mustard seems to evaporate. It doesn't add any additional flavor to the ribs. It's just there to hold the rub. So, let's see what happens with this turkey leg. All right. So, that one has technically the same type of flavor as the olive oil one. There's no hint of mustard or anything there. So the only one of these binders that uh, had any additional flavor added to the turkey leg was actually using the butter. So try that, you know, take some butter and use it as your, your binders, smear it on whatever you're cooking and then sprinkle your rub on it and see if it adds a buttery flavor to it. It seems to have worked here with these turkey legs, okay? Well, that's all we have time for. I want to thank the folks out in Chicago at the Spice House for sending us this Bronzeville rib rub. This is a great rub, and they have other great products out there. Check those guys out. I'll put the uh, contact information in the description block and down here at the bottom of the screen. Also, today's experiment was to show you how to set up your UDS to use the slow and sear and the dripping griddle if you happen to have the dripping griddle. You don't need the dripping griddle, but I think the dripping griddle kind of... Um, provided a little radiant heat underneath the uh, turkey leg instead of that huge opening underneath uh, in the drum area. I think it consolidated the heat or helped consolidate the heat at the top, which gave us a, a steady temperature, excuse me, a steady temperature in the 230s, between 230 and 2, 260, 270 uh, range. So, um, so if you got just a UDS uh, help, um, pick up a slow and sear and uh, it'll definitely help some of your uh, smaller cooks without having to fill up that big basket at the bottom of the drum uh, even though you can re uh, use the unused coals after a cook uh, it just 
more uh, efficient to have something like the slow and sear uh, to help uh, mitigate the use of all that charcoal for a small cook. So, well, uh, if you're interested in slow and sear, uh, the Drill and Barbecue Company, I'll put the contact information in the uh, description block and here on the screen, okay? Well, that's all we have time for today. Like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. See you guys around the smoker.